Epsom salt isn't conventional salt. It's magnesium sulfate. So that means I can't eat it like I ate my Himalayan salt plant, January 22nd, 2024, 3 p.m. But I can make sulfuric acid out of it. Or magnesium if I don't want that. But today I want a method how to make sulfuric acid which doesn't require game rage as its power source. So yeah, sulfuric acid today out of Epsom salt. Let's go. So, to begin this forbidden cook show, we venture out of the house to the local astrology store or something, cause ain't no way anyone sane would believe that stuff actually works. And we come back with Epsom salt. Next, to get the contraption, or however much salt water fits inside of it, then we start dissolving the salt inside of it until it becomes a saturated solution completely. You see, more salt means higher efficiency. First of all, it decreases resistance, and the formula for heat generation is I squared R, meaning your electrolyzer is less likely to melt itself. It also means that once a molecule is pulled to the electrodes, it's less likely that it will be a water molecule because of the abundance of salt molecules floating around. Now that the solution was saturated, it was poured into the makeshift electrolyzer and some cotton was stuffed inside of the pipe separating both sections so they don't mix and the generator doesn't start producing electrical loss. We then set up the electrodes. The negative side is going to be copper, or any metal which you want, and the positive side is actually going to be graphite this time. The reason is, if we put anything besides graphite, it will instantly get devoured by sulfate ions, like a Himalayan salt lamp would in my vicinity. I mean titanium and gold also work, but I don't have any gold laying around and I don't work for Lockheed Martin. So don't have any titanium either. But I do have pencils, so and I am gonna use those. And power's on for this thing, with the negative side being the copper, and the positive side being the graphite electrodes. Immediately after a turn set upon, you should start seeing bubbling, and bubbling mine is. There is small bubbles on the left side, and that would be the hydrogen bubbles, and on the right side, the bubbles are much larger in size, and that would actually be oxygen, oxygen oxide, and oxygen peroxide. You see, any sulfate ions which get dragged over here actually try to take a bite out of the graphite electrode. But the graphite electrode is incredibly corrosion resistant, so they fail and the sulfate ions actually get reabsorbed back into the water instead. And now, I'll leave this thing working for 8 hours, or at least until this part melts, due to, the, due to the high current and the fact that it's being held together by hot glue. So yeah, I'll leave this thing running for about 8 hours, I'll be back then. 8 hours later. I've returned. And, as you can see, the side on the right has a bunch of chunks of the electrode floating at the bottom, and a bunch of oxygen bubbles floating around the walls. The electrode is actually somehow mostly fine, and on the left side, however, you'll see it's foggier than my future. At the bottom, there is a solid white precipitate layer, and the electrode itself has a bunch of precipitate growing on it now. You see, as the magnesium ions come from here onto the cathode, they get plated onto the cathode. But because magnesium is incredibly reactive, the magnesium ions react with water forming insoluble magnesium hydroxide, which ends up sinking to the bottom of the flask like the titanic submersible, and that is why we have a white precipitate layer here. By the way, the white powder which is at the bottom right now is an incredibly strong laxative. And now that I've transferred these two into cups, 
I then filtered the solution with the acid inside through a regular coffee filter, just to catch any of the graphite chunks which are floating around. Now the acid can be heaped up and turned to a boil to boil off any of the excess water. This cup here, I actually washed and poured some water into. Because I get thirsty during the making of these videos. See, sulfuric acid itself is actually a liquid at room temperature. By sulfuric acid, I mean dihydrogen sulfate. So, what this means is that we will boil all of the water here and only water will come out during the heating part. The magnesium sulfate is going to stay right here and so will the sulfuric acid. What this means is that the sulfuric acid concentration will just go up and the magnesium sulfate will precipitate. And we're just basically using that property to keep all the sulfuric acid dissolved and only blow the water away. Huh, my stomach is starting to feel weird now. Wait a second. Two hours later. Now that most of the water has been boiled off and it's making a popping noise, I'm going to really decrease the heat to zero and I'm going to cover it before hot sulfuric acid droplets get sprayed in my face. Now that there is barely any more liquid inside of the flask, I'm just going to get it and I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to let it cool down until it is basically room temperature before I can do anything else with it. I'll just pour some regular water into the flask. And now I'm just going to pour the liquid out. And as a result of sulfuric acid's infinite solubility, every single sulfuric acid molecule which was produced is inside of here. So, to test it out, I'm going to get some baking soda and I'm going to dump it in. And as you can see, it fizzes pretty well. And that's it for this video. See you guys.